Hello, I'm Adam Barillet and welcome to this Crystal Connections video where we're exploring the essential oil of myrtle. Sometimes also referred to as common myrtle because there is a whole myrtle family and you may have heard of other essential oils such as lemon myrtle, anise myrtle and so on. Now the myrtle plant is actually native to North Africa and Iran, but it has been cultivated and is now part of the landscape throughout the Mediterranean. This plant has these beautiful green-blue leaves, these white blossoms that come out in spring that are soon replaced by these quite bitter black berries. Now it was believed that the myrtle plant was once found in the Garden of Eden and it's been a very sacred plant and has a long history of different spiritual and religious uses. It is from the leaves that we get this amazing essential oil that has so many powerful benefits. And in this video, we're gonna dive in and explore how you can work with myrtle to benefit your body, your mind, and your spirit. You've probably seen that beautiful picture where you see Aphrodite rising out of the ocean. Well, it was believed when she first was born, she was a bit ashamed and a bit shy of her nakedness, so she hid in a myrtle bush. And thus the myrtle has been linked to Aphrodite or Venus and has this connection to beauty, youthfulness, and vitality and seduction. Now, the myrtle essential oil actually kind of has some of those properties in it. And it's actually been used, added to water, and created as what's called angel water, which brides would spray on their face to make them more beautiful. Myrtle essential oil is really beneficial for the skin. So mixing it with your nighttime moisturizer can be absolutely amazing. Or if you've got any problems anywhere on your skin, anything like boils or um, he even hemorrhoids, <laughs> anything kind of crazy, um, scar tissue and that kind of thing, mixing a bit of that with some carrier oil and massaging in there, I find can be really, really helpful. Now, lots of people have found myrtle to be really beneficial for the upper respiratory system. So when I'm feeling a bit cold or fluy, you know, I might rub a little bit on my chest or pop some in the diffuser, and I find that really helpful as well. Other people have found using it topically for um, any issues with the thyroid, with the ovaries, or urinary tract infections, it also can be really helpful as well. Now, not only is it great for all these different things throughout the day and to allow us to be our most beautiful during the day, but it also allows us to have a really beautiful sleep at night. Popping it in the diffuser, rubbing it on the soles of your feet or breathing a few deep breaths in before you go to bed can really help with just getting a better night's sleep all the way through to when you've got that racing mind and kind of laying there staring up at the roof and can't drop off to sleep. Myrtle is so beautiful for helping you to relax and be your most beautiful self physically and feel vital and energized because you not get a nice beautiful sleep at night. The aroma of myrtle is really quite calming and relaxing, creating tranquility for both the emotions and the mind. It really helps to reinstill hope when you're feeling defeated, or it's really great for quelling anger. So if you are feeling a bit frustrated or, you know, like giving up or just, you know, not sure which way to go, popping myrtle in the diffuser will really be uplifting or just pop a drop in your hands and take some really nice deep breaths. Now on a deeper level, myrtle can really help with the mind and help to shift mindsets, especially when you're kind of seem to be stuck on a certain person or a certain event and seeing them in a certain way. Myrtle helps to lift the veil so that you can see things in a brand new perspective and see things in a more proactive or, um, I guess, beneficial or positive manner. Remember I was mentioning before that Myrtle has this connection to um, Venus and Aphrodite and thus beauty? Well, working with Myrtle can help you to see the beauty in every event, happening and person. Everything is unfolding in this universe in a really magical way. And when you feel that you're stuck in this darkness and can't understand why something's happening, reach for Myrtle and look for the beauty in every single person. You know, Myrtle will teach us how to find not just the beautiful, maybe like a beautiful person in a crowd, but how to look at an individual who maybe is upset, who is challenging to you in some way, and see what the gift is in that, to see what the teaching is in that, and to see the beautiful soul that does exist deep within the light of that person. As an essential oil of love, myrtle can be used to help keep love flourishing in your life. 
diffusing it or aromatically dressing it in a regular basis can really help to keep the passion and the excitement in a relationship and keep that longevity and also to stop other people interfering as well. Now, if you're going on a first date or you want to make kind of impress one, get some myrtle and run it through your hair. And that is said to enhance attractiveness and that ability to be very enticing. Now, it's also a bit of a fertility essential oil as well. And traditionally, it was given to brides on their first wedding night, not so they'd fall pregnant then. So actually, so they wouldn't fall pregnant. It actually helps to make sure that people fall pregnant when the time is right, when the universe is kind of due. So when you are doing any kind of manifestation work, you want to make sure that things do come at the right time. You know, how many times have people met a, the, the partner of their dreams just before they're moving to a different city? Or the job offer has come just after an, you've accepted another job. Working with Myrtle, whenever you're doing manifestation work, and you maybe want to include it with your other manifestation oils, such as, you know, wild orange or bergamot or Roman chamomile or turmeric, to go, hey, I'd like to manifest this and I want it to be in perfect timing as well. Now, whereas the Greeks and the Romans really quite focused on myrtle and its beautiful white flowers and its beautiful scent of its essential oil gifted to us from the leaves, the Egyptians were also intrigued with how the white blossoms would soon be replaced by these dark, bitter black berries. For the Egyptians, the white blossoms represented the fleeting moment of this incarnation here on, on planet Earth, this life that we have, and the blackberries represented the soul or the passing into the underworld, the other side, the other realms. And the interesting thing about this is the essential oil is not gifted from the blossom or the berry, but actually from the leaf. And so the leaf, which has this beautiful fragrant smell, almost represents the soul that journeys throughout the wheel of the year and throughout the wheels of life, throughout the mortality, when we're here in this incarnation with those represented by those white blossoms, and also when we go to the other worlds, represented by that black berry. So, myrtle can actually be really beautifully used for anything to do with um, transitioning through any stage in your life. It can really help you to deal with death. It's a really great comforter in sorrow. Remember, it gives that hope and the strength to go on. Uh, it's a really nice one also to work with, just to remind us that, you know, our, our life and our time here is, um, you know, we've only got a certain amount of time here, and sometimes we take that for granted and to make the most of everything here as well. Having that connection to the other world, it can be used in, you know, past life regression, connecting with angels or, you know, anything on other realms as well. Even doing some kind of shamanic work, this can be really beautiful as well. Diffusing myrtle or using it at night can really help to make your dreams more vivid and can give you prophetic dreams and more guidance through your dream work. Now, myrtles still though do take advantage of this kind of light, joyous, youthful, vital kind of energy that it has. And it's really great to use. I love it during any springtime kind of rituals or fertility rituals and bring new things into a life. And amazing in the new moon. Of course, the new moon is this time when we stop, we let go of things that haven't service, almost like letting go of that death kind of thing. But then we bring in new life as well. So myrtle is one of my favorite oils to use around the new moon. So give that a shot as well to give you that you know, letting go of what hasn't served you in the last lunar cycle and it had excitement and that anticipation of what will come in the next lunar cycle as well. Because of its seductive nature, it really helps you to be enticing and to help you to be persuasive with other people and with the universe in beckoning what your desires are and bringing them into your life. Myrtle is such an amazing essential oil to use for the heart chakra because of this light, joyous aroma that it has and an energy that instills hope, that instills tranquility, that quells anger and frustration and allows us to see the beauty in other people, the, beautiful, the beauty in life itself and the beauty within us. It really helps us to open up our heart in different ways. Whenever you feel that your heart has been closed off, maybe due to hurt, pain or suffering, reach for myrtle and anoint it over the heart chakra and start to, sorry, doing the Australian way of the flies, um, and allow yourself to really open up to see the joyousness in life again. As I mentioned before, life here on this planet in this incarnation is but a fleeting moment and to live it without having a heart full of love and embracing other people and every opportunity that comes is a wasted opportunity. Myrtle, make sure that you remember that your time is finite and to open your heart to embrace all that comes your way. 
Myrtle, of course, is beautiful diffused or inhaled just by itself, but you can also make some stunning blends. You can either diffuse around your space or you can mix with some fractionated coconut oil, pop it in a roller or aromatically dress in it and enjoy that beautiful natural fragrance on you. Now, if you're just looking for a really great fragrance, try Myrtle with things like Bergamo, Clary Sage, Lavender, Clove can be really nice, Neroli can be stunning, even Hyssop is really, really great. If you're looking for making a blend that will help you to be really quite seductive and to help you know win and be a bit more victorious in life, try even a little bit of um, myrtle with a bit of laurel. Laurel, of course, helps to promote uh, victory and winning and being triumphant. Now remember, laurel is also really great for the respiratory system, so diffusing those two together could be amazing. And even throw in something like some um, hyssop would be great for the respiratory system as well, and eucalyptus is great as well. Now, we've also got that heart chakra. How can we really embrace that heart chakra? Well, this is where we want to bring a lot of our floral oils in. So geranium can be really nice. Ylang Ylang could be really good. Marjoram would be a really nice one as well um, because it really helps to open up our um, ability to commit to other people and be devoted to other people. The last one, if we are looking at kind of dealing with that death and that sorrow and letting go of you know the passing of someone, then I would really try combining something like myrtle with magnolia, with cypress, and with myrrh. And this can be a really kind of comforting, um, offering a bit of um, consolation um, for anyone who is dealing with any sorrow or any grief because of the loss of someone you love. When I'm working with essential oils, I love to bring in other gifts of nature to really help me get the most out of my work, especially when I'm doing metaphysical work with the oils. Now, I love working with crystals, and the crystal that I reach for when I'm working with myrtle is onyx, black onyx. Now, the interesting thing is, there's a bit of a myth about onyx that's also associated with Aphrodite. It was said that one day while she was sleeping, Eros, her son, got one of his arrows and pierced off some of her nails. But the gods didn't want any part of this beautiful goddess to perish, so they turned them into stone. And onyx actually translates from a word meaning on ar or which is onyx, meaning nail. And so this was said to be Aphrodite's fingernails. Doesn't that make it sound glamorous? But as we know, Aphrodite was very magnetic in her energy. Did she, you know, go around chasing what she wanted? No, she knew how beautiful she was. She had faith in that and she allowed people to come to her. And this is what Black, Black Onyx allows you to do. It allows you to rely on your inner magnetism. Now, if you think about this, we live in a world where we're very yang and we're told if we want something, go get it, chase, 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 chase. And sometimes that can be quite exhausting and quite excessive. Oh, there's a fly who wants to be in this video too. Onyx allows us, remember these black crystals help to absorb energy and can help you to absorb things that you desire into your life. So if you do feel that you're chasing and you're overwhelming yourself from chasing different things, work with Onyx, Myrtle, uh, Onyx and Myrtle and allow yourself to be a little bit more magnetic, your beautiful self to shine and allow that um, kind of, you know, attract things into your life. You know, often we send out our visions of what we want in our mind and our heart is there to be a magnetic pull, to pull those beautiful things into our lives. Now we can also bring in a third element and this also ties in very much with what we're talking about and that is the animal guide of the spider. <gasps> Why on earth would I talk about spiders when I'm talking about this amazing essential oil? Well think about this as well. Spider has an amazing energy of magnetism. Most other animals, when they want what they need, you know, when they need to hunt, they'll go out and get it. But what does Spider do? She spins her web, which is an extension of herself, and then she knows that she has done a good enough good job and that she is good enough, and then she sits patiently and waits, and what she needs will come to her web. So you can actually use the idea of myrtle, black onyx, and the spider or the spider's web, and spin a web of what you desire, and then wait for it to come. Now, I'm not encouraging you to sit on your ass and do nothing, kind of going, oh, what's happening? But um, it's about getting that balance of also having trust that all things will come in the right time, as we mentioned before. Also, all these can be very protective, especially when we're doing magical work, both myrtle, black onyx, and spider, especially when we visualize that web of protection around us. So what you can do to bring these three energies together, you can hold a bit of onyx, smell a bit of myrtle, close your eyes and visualize the spider in front of you. And if the spider could talk to you, what would it say? It can be really quite interesting. Now, astrologically, Myrtle is associated with Libra. Libra, of course, is the sign that governs relationships. And Myrtle really helps us to get the most out of all our relationships, see the beauty in other people, and thus get, see the beauty in every experience and every relationship as well. 
Now, do you have to be a Libra to work with Myrtle? No, definitely not. We can all work with our Libra aspects and help us to be more harmonious in our relationships in different ways. Now, the astrological body that governs this one is Proserpina. Now, Proserpina is the Latin name for, for Persephone, who was actually the wife of Pluto, or Hades, the god of the underworld. Now, there's some beautiful myths on Proserpina or Persephone, P-E-R-S-P-H-O-N-E. -E. And if you Google them, she is basically the goddess of the underworld. And she spends half the time in the underworld and half the time with her mother, Ceres or Demeter, here on Earth. And this actually regulates the seasons. Her mother is the mother of fertility, and so her daughter is up in spring and summer, and there's greenness everywhere. And then Persephone goes into the underworld in autumn and winter, and everything goes dormant and all the leaves fall off. And that's how we understand the myth of the cycles of the seasons. So this talks about, you know, that mortality. Proserpina or Persephone was also another gorgeous goddess as well. So it ties in all these different energies. Now, Proserpina is an asteroid that's floating around there and has an impact on our ability to be empowered and not be um, taken, a, not to be a victim of our circumstances. And so have a look at that. Have a look at where it's in your chart. It can be really quite interesting in how they all tie together. Now, have you worked with Myrtle Essential Oil? I'd love to hear about your experiences. Please do share your comments in the section below on how you like to use it, either for the body, the mind, or the spirit. Remember also that when it comes to essential oils, you want to make sure that you are getting something that's a pure therapeutic grade essential oil. And if you need help finding a really reliable, great source of Myrtle Essential Oil, my contact details are below. Feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm Adam Barillet. Blessed be.